to be honest, we are missing out on the greatest gift that Jesus said was the greatest gift, right? If he's saying so, we're well, missing something if we're not. He did, he did, he did. <laughs> the simple truths are vulnerable conversations on the everyday questions that emerge as the message of Christ and our culture intersect. Whether you are a young professional headed into industry, navigating school, or simply somewhere in the middle, take your place in the conversation. In this first episode, we're joined by singer, instrumentalist, and producer Kibwe Thomas, who will share on the heart of a worshiper and how Holy Spirit has guided him through the music industry. Kibwe, hey. bottom of our hearts, so good to have you here. I'm so excited that you're here, man. I am excited as well. Thank you guys for having me. This is going to be fun. We've been catching a lot of jokes just setting up. So, <laughs> You know, setting up was, was hard. It was a little hard, and we got to learn about each other. But you know what? Um, it's going to be vulnerable conversations, and that's what we're committed to. So thanks for joining us. How did you get onto your path of music? Oh, man, this is going a long ways back. Um, I grew up in the church, and that's you know, a fortune that not everybody has, but I grew up in the church. My both parents are loving Christians and we, my brother and my sister and myself, we grew up in tiny churches. Started out in Trinidad, which is where I'm from. Hey. Oh, I didn't yeah. know you were from that's Trinidad. Right. Trini. Okay. She didn't tell you, come on, that's why I'm here. Oh my gosh. Well, you <laughs> I saw the Trini connection and I was like, I'm in, sign me up. <laughs> Did you grow up in Canada? That's what you I, said? Yeah, so we came to Canada when I was six. Okay. Um, and we lived here for many years, but you know, we. Uh, when we came here, we ended up in a small church where there wasn't a lot of musicians and the musicality and the worship was at a certain level. And out of necessity, we, we as kids jumped behind instruments and, you know, that kind of thing. I didn't really take music seriously until long after that. Um, That's so yeah. cool. It sounds like Jensen's story growing up. Yeah. yeah. Um, living in Trinidad, I mean, you were just a few years old, yeah. but has um, that your heritage influence your music style? Oh yeah. Um, side story, my dad is a gospel Lipsonian, which nice. is Calypso, but Christian. And you know, they were like kind of pioneers of this thing back in the day, before my day. And uh, I have vague remember memories of like, you know, sitting at band rehearsals and there's like, you know, guitars and steel pans and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and steel pan. they, you know, they actually traveled all over the country and were on ra TV stations, radio, they did their thing. So the, my the music's in your blood. Oh, yeah. You can't get all oh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, when, there's always a bit of that in, in whatever I do. Um, awesome. I'll sneak it in whenever I can. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Gospel Lipsonian. Yeah. You heard it here first. I did not know about that term. Yeah. That's pretty it's cool. the only way, man. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Trees. I love it. From your experiences, how, how vital would you think? Like, I know some of you may know. Kibwe has extensive music experience with the music industry. You're a singer, you're a songwriter, you're an instrumentalist, you also produce music. How vital has it been to maintain a walk with Christ through it all? Um, I think I wouldn't be, be standing here um, uh, if I didn't. And you know, I, I think my walk with that, like anybody else's walk, has not always been steady yeah. and evenly paced and walking in the right direction. There's been many, many little detours between now and uh, little Kibwe and big Kibwe. Um, but I am where I am because of the understanding that the Holy Spirit must guide me or I will just never go anywhere worth going. Um, I'll never get into, a, you know, what he has for me, which, uh, you know, I think is is unlimited because you know he's he's unlimited mm. and uh, i don't think i would be where i am today you know what and going back to what i said it's not always it's not always great i've been in many in my music life many different bands or many different stages yeah. you know physical yeah. stages of life um and so many times i had to say holy spirit is this where you want me mm -hmm. you know am i where i am because you sent me here or because you know i need a check or I, you know, I want to make a connection with this person. Mm. And so many, sometimes I've been brave enough to walk away from things that were very good um, career-wise. But sometimes I've realized after the fact that I conceded or, or bent my, you know, 
w what I know my standard is yeah. um, and got through something and had to ask for forgiveness. But, you know, we're not perfect. I'll give you one example. Um, Please. So I, I showed up at a gig. This is downtown Toronto. This is probably maybe six, six seven years ago. And it's not, the gig, it's not that the gig was pristine or had a lot of, like, you know, things behind it. It was just a gig. And the musical director that called me, I do a lot of work with. Yeah. I show up at the gig and there was just something wrong. Okay. And it was about, uh, it was a book release. I didn't know anything about the gig. I showed up and I set up my keyboard and I started to see some things happen. This book release was not a book that we should be reading. <laughs> <laughs> and there was images and there was like a topic of this thing that was totally not you know, wow. yeah. There it was, didn't represent you, no, you didn't feel comfortable. No, yeah. no yeah. I don't know how real or how many, you know, the words you want me to say in this, in this forum, but we didn't, I didn't need to be there. And there was gonna be cameras and there was gonna be news involved. And, you know, um, you know I didn't wanna be on the six o'clock news with that backdrop, you know? So, and, you know, anyways, I had to decide, Holy Spirit, you know, no matter the consequence, I gotta realize when it's time to run, get up and walk away. And I walked away. I left my keyboard there. And I said to the musical director, you're going to have to find someone. I'll, I'll do you a solid and I'll leave my gear set up, but you got to find somebody else to do this. And you shouldn't have called me for it because this is not, nothing about me says yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. And, and you knew that. So anyways. Um, wow. Have you always been like that with a, where your integrity takes a, a front seat? Uh, or there were times where it didn't? Um, I, th I think there, my integrity was always there, but my boldness and my... Uh, my resolve to stand up and know what uh, I should not stand for was, was weaker. I was always, I'm still the quiet guy, you know, and it'll have to be something really radical for me to be, to me to, for me to put my foot down. Yeah. And I realized, you know, keeping in the Holy Spirit yeah. and uh, being centered just means that you, you, you can't be everywhere. You can't be in every circumstance. If God didn't send you there, you're gonna hurt yourself. You know, yeah. and God's gonna be like, well, yeah. who told you to go there? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, lots of stories, but that, that's, that's one that always sticks out to me. Um, you know, anyways. You didn't have to mention the book, but I think we all kind of got an idea of, oh. of what genre you're talking about. But Kibbs, just so we know, I know Kibway, you mentioned, you know, there was young Kibway and now you're a little, little bit older, mm -hmm. but you mentioned having this growing relationship with Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the person of Holy Spirit. So I just want to talk about him yeah. and your influences in your experience and just drawing it back to the meat of today's topic. In your words, in your estimation, Holy Spirit and worship, how do these two, well, first of all, person of God in the area of worship, how do these two guys in intersect? Um, that's, I don't know, it's a, that's a hard question. <laughs> I think they're one and the same. I, I yeah. think without the Holy Spirit, we're not people of God. Yeah. Um, I think that's the evidence. Yeah. Uh, it, I realized that my life trying to be Christian and trying to do what's right, um, and especially in the world that I live where there's so many influences that are ungodly and, yeah. you know, um, but look great yeah. and big and flashy and, you know, whatever. Touring the world, all these things uh, look amazing. Yeah. but. For me, I realized what the Holy Spirit was to me and needs to be for me and anyone that says they're a believer of God mm -hmm. is that he's literally there to direct. When Jesus left, he said, I'm leaving you something better. And that was not a, you know, it's not something that you train and you get to know and then it's just, you know, part of you. It's something that every day it's a, um, the Holy Spirit. That yeah. gift is renewed when you wake up in the morning. You've got yeah. to talk to that spirit. Yeah. I realized that in a funny, in, in a really miraculous way. I was on tour with this lady. Her name is Buffy St. Marie and most of you probably wouldn't know her. Uh, she was, you know, she had huge hits in the 60s and 70s. Her songs, you know, are covered by people like Elvis Presley. Like that's her generation. She's like uh, in her mid 80s right now. She's still touring the world. Anyways, we were in Australia. Um, wow. That's uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we've been all, that's a great band. Like, first of all, sitting behind somebody like that, sitting at the floor of somebody that has that much knowledge of not just the industry, but just life. Yeah and politics and, you know, um, yeah. social matters. She's been through it all, right? She's been at the, anyways. So we're in Australia and um, we, I didn't know, really know anyone in Australia, but I knew Hillsong. 
right? So there's not many things I want to do, but like, where's Hillsong? Let me see if I can get there. Just to pop in for a minute, see what's up. I mean, like, it wasn't even a time of day. I was just like, I just want to see what's up. So. Was it the Melbourne campus? Yes. Okay. So I was in Melbourne. Yeah. And somebody that actually went to Queensway a long time ago, I remembered he was there studying um, worship. Um, so he was there studying. And I reached out to him and he's like, hey, you want to come down? And I didn't hear from him. I reached out to him before I went to Australia. Heard from him that day and literally jumped out of the, not a bus, but jumped out of the vehicle with the rest of the, ma the band who was going to go check out this site seeing thing or go to some cool mall. And I was like, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to jump out right here in the middle of the street and see if I can get a ride somewhere that I don't know. I'm just going to say, hey, do you know where Hillsong is? And I ended up there and my friend ran outside. He met me and there was... Um, there was a random uh, speaker there, and there was an event about to start. His name was John Bevere. Uh -huh. I didn't know who John Bevere was before this. And he had just released a book called The Holy Spirit. Yes. And I remember walking in there, and the universe, my whole being and my whole reason for, for, for living showed up in that moment because... The night before, after, a, after one of our shows with Buffy, you know, she's always talking about spiritual things. She's a native, native Canadian, mm -hmm. and her perspective on Christianity is a tough one because in her generations, and even some, like our drummer, for example, has seen a lot of persecution from Christians. Mm -hmm. When they think the cross, they think of that big cross that literally came off of a boat and stuck in their land mm -hmm. and murdered a lot of their their generations and you know took the kids yeah. to you know that's what they think of when they think of the cross yeah, not what we yeah, think yeah, of yeah, yeah. right yeah so we've had with Buffy many conversations about religion and you know the night before this moment of me trying to get to um, Hillsong uh, we were finished the show and we were just striking up a conversation she pulled me aside and she said hey you know what what I think Christianity has wrong she said she said the Holy Spirit is a woman. And I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, but here we go, here we go again, right? So, but you know, and she started to say, no, but you know, take me seriously. Like there's every time, if you read the, the Bible or read your Bible, uh, every time the Holy Spirit's mentioned, the, there are, it's mentioned with female attributes, mm -hmm. like the breasted one or mm -hmm. the caregiver. It's always like a female attribute to the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, I'd never heard any of this stuff before in my whole life. I've been a Christian, like I said, all my life, right? So not that I believed in that moment that the Holy Spirit was a woman, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is where she was coming from. Yeah. But I was learning something that I needed to go and look into. I'd never heard before, right? Mm. So fast forward to literally the night after, yeah. or the afternoon after, and I show up at uh, Hillsong Church. John Bevere, who I've never heard of, yeah. is a guest speaker. Yeah. And that whole, the whole time of, of me jumping out of that vehicle with my bandmates, I knew that God was up to something mm -hmm. and, you know, not that I knew what was happening, mm -hmm. but I knew that I got out because of something uh, greater or there's some, yeah. there was some purpose behind it. Yeah. And so I get to Hillsong, my friend comes outside and he meets me. He's like, hey, man, there's a guest speaker tonight. Well, first of all, so good to see you. I didn't see him in years. <laughs> and he brings me in and I'm like, you know, looking at the it's a really cool place like there's a there's a shop where there's like lots of books and there's like it's a yeah, people, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a bustling little yeah, thing over there yeah, right yeah yeah so i was like cool cool and then we went inside the lights dim everybody rushes and sits down and it's like a like a concert's about to happen worship happens which is obviously amazing and the guest speaker on uh, none of this i knew john bevere he introduces himself when he yeah. talks about this book yeah. and the first thing you know this guy said so many the things so there's something you don't know about the holy spirit and he jumped right in. He's like, every time you read about the Holy Spirit, there's something that's feminine, nurturing, breasted one. And the same exact things that I'd never heard in my life as a 26-year-old or whatever I was, uh, never heard in my life, was coming from that pulpit. And it, and it made me realize that how in the, I didn't know I was going to be there, right? Wow. Something told me to get out of that vehicle. Well, first of all, something put me on a plane to Australia, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm halfway across the world, and I realized that I was, my physical placement was physically orchestrated by something that I never even talked to and can't even see. Mm -hmm. A Holy Spirit did all that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. spoke to a non-believer mm -hmm. the night before mm -hmm. to perk up something and an interest in me. 
and brought a, brought a preacher all across the world for that one night to, sh to show me how real he was. Man, that's incredible. You know? And from then, I, I've realized that this thing is real. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not theology. It's not religion. It's not God the Father, God the, you know, yeah. the Son and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't yeah. end there. He's yeah. literally here, yeah. physically moving limbs from one place to another. And my whole life from that moment has been purposed to be on the side of that Holy Spirit and be aware of that Holy Spirit that's here to physically guide me yeah. through this life. I like to think about the Holy Spirit guiding us as he's leaving little breadcrumbs, yeah. little, little small crumbs, little clues that if you, you know, the thing about a breadcrumb, it's really small and you could bypass that clue. Mm -hmm. But if you have the eyes and the ears to pay attention mm -hmm. and to connect dots, it normally leads you into a place and a place that is closer to him where he reveals himself. Yes. Right. Isn't that, but you have to be open to it, right? You could have just ignored that conversation. You could have ignored all those cues. But something inside of you said, hey, I actually want to show you and reveal myself to you in a way that you probably didn't, haven't seen before. Yeah. 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 Totally. <laughs> to totally. And you're right. It's so easy to miss the crumbs. It's not that they're not there. It's just we're, we're not really looking. You know, we got, we got lots to do. And I want to jump in here because one of the m most interesting and revitalizing topics that we've ever spoken about in my time at The Hub was in talking to young adults that Holy Spirit is not just this force, but He's a person. A person whom we have real relationship with, can have real conversations with, not just this fictitious spirit floating around, but He's so purposeful and He only does the will of the Father and He only releases things from the Father. And I love the relationship that you spoke about. And I find it so interesting because mm -hmm. there are some young adults at the Hub right now going through that, ex that exact same book. And they were just talking about, wow, there's so, so much insights that they had never known about Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you a question, Kibbs. At what point in your life, now just drawing it back into worship, okay? Yeah. And the person of Holy Spirit in worship. Did you ever have an experience with Holy Spirit in, in what Christians call the baptism of the Spirit? You mean like t uh, tongues? Tongues or mm -hmm. a manifestation of that welling of joy? Uh, yes, I've spoke, to be honest, I've spoken in tongues maybe once or twice in my life. Both of them were in private. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. As a kid, uh, I prob probably was a teenager at the time. Um, I would just sit and I had a keyboard in my bedroom and I would just sit and worship, you know, all hours of the night, I'd just be in there. And I remember um, a few times, almost every night, I would just be worshiping till I couldn't remember anymore or wake up and worship. And I remember a few nights of, of speaking in tongues. I, w I was always so like, why not me? You know, why, why can't I just open my mouth and then, you know, happens to everybody else that, you know, that believes in the Holy Spirit and believes in the infilling. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only happened a few times, um, yeah. but, other manifestations, yes, um, you can feel when, when a, a room changes. And it's funny for me, that happens a lot of times not on a worship stage and not even singing a Christian song. Yeah. That's just because I go in with that. I go in yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. You have, you, you, that's, a, that's so yeah. special. I just yeah. want to yeah. like flesh it out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You're saying something really interesting that you experience the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, even in things that might not be a gospel song. That's right. you're, is that, that's really interesting. Is it because yeah. you're available? Why do you think that that's, you're positioned like that? You can experience something outside of, of, of the gospel music. Well, you know, I, I think it, I am, period, just a worshiper. Mm. I might be playing a bride down the aisle or playing a pop song for an 85 year old lady um, in front of people I've never met before, but that's all I do. I, that's, I open, whatever I do, yeah. it's worship. Um, and I really make a point of that, you know, especially whatever stage it is, I'm going on there prayed, yeah. prayed up and said, Lord, use these fingers. When I hit a note, yeah. let somebody in the audience feel closer to you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and see you mm -hmm. somehow. That's mm -hmm. just, that's so, just kind of. So you're never really on pause. No. It's just, no. you're living this life of but worship, being a worshiper. Worship. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's we, so good. Something we, I think something that we, re, as Christians, we don't understand. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you could be driving your car yep. in worship. Yep. It really, I think 
the definition for me of worship is just giving reverence yeah. to yeah. God, yeah. right? And you can give reverence to God washing yeah. dishes, you know? Because yeah. God gave you those dishes. You could say, thank you, Jesus, in your spirit, yeah. and you're worshiping. Um, there's, there's a, and, and where, let's go back to like, you know, has there been anything remarkable in that kind of regard? I remember yeah. on stage with Buffy, I think I told you about this yeah, little story. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember where we were, somewhere in the States. And her, a lot of her uh, uh, fans are also native, native Canadian, Native American, wherever she, you know, native from wherever we are, yeah. it's a lot of native people that come uh, to these shows. And we were in the autograph line after the concert uh, it was a really great concert, um, and the band the bandmates kind of line up. We sign the autographs. Whoever wants to, my signature, which is probably maybe a few of them. Um, and uh, he's being humble. Yeah, <laughs> he met, we were in the presence of a rock star. <laughs> we <were> really <laughs> at the end of the table was Buffy, right? Yeah. Which everybody wants to see. Yeah, yeah. And there was this older gentleman. I didn't really pay attention. We're catching jokes, me and the bandmates, and we're signing <laughs> autographs. And uh, this guy leans over the table really close. And I'm like, whoa, I just, that's when I noticed him. And, you know, he's, you can tell he's Native, uh, Native American. And he puts out his left hand for me to shake. And I was kind of, like, I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm left-handed. So I got my pen in my left hand. I'm like, what? I'm trying to figure out what to do here. <laughs> Cause you shake with your right, you shake with your right. So I put out my right and he was like, you, you tell he wanted my left hand. So I had to put, I had to figure it out. <laughs> get past the awkward moment. And I shake his hand with my left hand and he grabs it tight, doesn't let go. And he's like, this, left hand connection is a sign of, uh, it's a spiritual connection and we only do this for very spiritual beings. He said to me, um, he, he's some kind of leader in, in their spiritual community. And he said to me, I don't have very good eyesight and I was very far from the stage, at, but only now that I'm close do I know who I saw the light coming from. The whole concert I felt and I saw some, a glow from a being that was there and now that I'm at the table I came to this table to see who it was and he said I don't know anything about you but just know that your that your spirit was seen from back so, of the that's incredible it, 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 you know you, you, you're entering this territory where even people who are not of the faith right but are open to a spiritual will mm -hmm. could recognize the, the power of Jesus in your life that light that's on you it is um Undeniable. Yeah. You don't even have to be a yeah. Christian. It's not me. Uh, yeah, it's not me. It's <laughs> undeniably something beyond me, which is yeah. so humbling, right? Wow. I find that fulfills scripture so true to God's word, eh? Like we are filled with the light of Jesus, that our citizenship, when we accept Jesus, is transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And I know we say this verse all the time at yeah. the hub, but I love the significance of that. You are literally filled from the inside out with the light of the world, who mm -hmm. is Jesus. I think it's so cool that that, that non-believing gentleman yeah. who is known as a spiritual leader in his community yeah. recognized a light that we can't see in the natural. Yeah. You have to be open to the spirit. Yeah. But, but not only that, a light shines the brightest yeah. in dark places. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you were in a place that is away yeah. from the church and where it's open to a different spirituality, the light of Christ still shines very bright in that dark place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you think about it that way, it's a big stage with lots of expensive lights and big <laughs> booming sound system and you know this huge message coming off of a, of a microphone and roaring instruments yeah. and yeah. that spirit spoke louder than all that stuff I you know that. i wasn't i wasn't in the christians christian circle in the midst of heavy worship we were in you know not you know and but god was still lord over all of that to anybody that would open their eyes you know wow that's so good I think that's so, that displays much more of an example of what evangelism should be. That it's more, we know the Bible says, it's not only by the words we say, but by the life we lead, it's by our actions, mm -hmm. right? If, I, if we never told anyone that we were Christian, yeah. how much of a testimony would our actions be to that, right? Mm -hmm. And I love, that's what your life exemplified, yeah. that you are, you are a worshiper, number one, you're tuned and attuned to hear the Holy Spirit because yeah. He's your source of, of the Father and Jesus. I think that you're such a great example. That was a great example of being Jesus in the marketplace. Amen. Yes. I want to touch something quickly, being a, you're, you're a worship leader. Um, you know, sometimes you're in the spotlight, right? And um, all eyes are on you, right? And even, even Satan himself, 
was the head of worship. And he would have been in a similar position with all eyes on you, all the attention on you. Mm. And it's a dangerous place. As we know that Satan fell from that place um, of wanting to be adored, just mm. like Jesus himself. Yeah. And he wanted the adoration for himself, not to Jesus. And, you know, as a worship leader, sometimes we could kind of, you could find yourself in a similar place where you're on the spotlight, all eyes on you. Um, how do you keep yourself from falling into that place of letting that consume you, that attention mm -hmm. consume you? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you keep yourself humble, pliable, and 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 uh, and keeping the focus on Jesus? Um, for me, I really believe that I am I amount to nothing, um, and my skills. And all these things that you know, maybe other people would disagree with that statement, but at the heart of it, yeah. I really must believe that my God has sustained me till this point. And you know, thinking about it that way, yeah. He's the only one that can sustain me tomorrow, yeah. not my skill, you yeah. know, um, not my intentions or my jobs. Uh, that also goes back down to, again. Everything's coming back to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you're talking to the Holy Spirit, you realize that it's not you. You know that it's not you because you didn't open that real. door. Yeah, he keeps it real. <laughs> he keeps it real because as soon as, he, as soon as you start to believe that it's you and you're talking to the Holy Spirit every day, yeah. he will reprimand you. He will yeah. take that away yeah. because at the end of the day, you want what the Holy Spirit wants, yeah. you know, if you're talking to him every day. Yeah. So, um, and I love he, that his reprimands, sorry to cut yeah, you off, Kips. Yeah, his reprimands are not like these slaps in the face mm -hmm. or a face, so sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they're these- I mean, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, they're these gentle just nudges yeah. saying, hey, son, mm. come back, come back home. Or hey, daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes it's just you realizing that the stuff, the mess you ended up in, yeah. it's because of, you know, you, you, you kind of like a little, ch like my little three-year-old, you know, you only have to tell him, you know, uh, don't do that so many times because a lot of times, a lot of things he does, yeah. he feels the repercussion himself for, do <laughs> for doing it. And you just got to look and be like, yeah, and he's like, that, yeah, you're right, you're right, Dad. Sure, yeah, uh, fair enough. <laughs> you know, so that, I mean, Good parenting moments. Yeah. yeah. Holy Spirit, man, just let him, let him lead you every day. And, you know, he will keep you humble. Mm -hmm. He will not just keep you humble. He'll drive you to become really good at something. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll show you the gifts that are in your hand. And you might not even know, but if you're asking him, he'll show you. Mm -hmm. And he will help you in a direction and provide people out of nowhere to yeah. guide that gift. And you know, he'll start to orchestrate you. He'll start to make you get out of that vehicle when you think you're going here. And, mm, mm, mm. You know? Just like what happened with you. That's right. Those I love that. Friends. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's it. Man, to, to be honest, we are missing out on the greatest gift that Jesus said was the greatest gift. Right? If he's saying so, we're well, missing something if we're not. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Well, we, I think we're almost out of time here. All right. Um, such good conversation, such rich conversation. Kibwe, I, I just love to see how the Lord has used you in this particular field of music. Yeah. And um, as yeah. you have surrendered your life to him, he has, uh, he has, be he has used everything about yeah. you, you know, even in places where in dark places, the light, the, the light of Jesus shines through you. Mm. Um, it's just such a mm. uh, beautiful thing to see. Mm. Thank you so much, man.